Today's Toy Spot, we are having a look at the DC Collectibles DC Comics Designer Series Lee Bermeo. This is Batman. Spots where you had a look at the Superman. If you haven't had a chance to check out that video, go have a look. In the meantime, Batman here, the Cape Crusader, comes with a pair of interchangeable hands. He also comes with a batarang. And this is also from the designer series from Lee, Ber Lee Bermeo. Side of the box features the artwork here from Lee. And the back of the, the, back of the package shows you uh, a sketch of the figure as well as what we ended up getting here in figure form. Or sketch of the character, I should say. Batman and Superman were both sculpted by Par Eric Sosa. On the underside of the package, you can head over to www.dccomics.com if you want to check out some really cool new upcoming figures and collectibles. You can also, if you have a tough time finding a comic book store, as time to time, and I, I do say it frequently, I suppose, if you can't find a local comic book store in your area, that's that's all right. Head over to www.comicshoplocator.com, put in your zip code, or in this case, Canadian, your postal code, and it'll tell you uh, comic book stores in your area. It's that easy. And Spot actually has used it as a true testimonial. I have used it and found a comic book store in my area. Uh, that being said, Spot's going to take a break. I'm going to get this opened up. And when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the DC Comics designer series, Lee Bermeo, Batman. There's more anyway, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. To run by the accessories again, Lee Bermeo's uh, Batman does come with a rather large Batarang. Though large in size, it is fairly thin, as you can see here. Um, it does feel a little on the thin, like I, literally, it does feel on a thin side. Like if you bend it just the wrong way, you're obviously going to get big stress marks going on this. Be very careful uh, with the battering itself. It has a very unique design to it, one could say. In fact, one could say that really about the Cape Crusader as well. A very unique design and very accurate to Lee Bermeo's type of style. Uh, also, for holding that battering, the Cape Crusader and Batman also does come with a pair of interchangeable hands. These hands are open, whereas the ones currently in the sockets of the arms are defaulted closed shut. They're just a pair of fists. So you get a, uh, get a pair of those to make use for the Batarang. All right, so let's have a look at uh, Batman, which uh, may not be everyone's cup of tea. Uh, it's duly noted. It may not be everyone's preferred choice for how Batman may look. But that's one of the beauties of the designer series. In some regards, it may alienate, I think, some collectors out there that are just looking for a Batman figure. Picking this guy up, much like picking up the Superman, you look at this and you're immediately thinking, I don't know, that doesn't really look like Batman to me. Whereas on the other end of things, for somebody who's a big fan of Lee Bermeo's work, may pick this up and think, oh, that's, that's a really good representation of Batman in, in plastic treatment. Though I'm not super crazy about the design, I think, truthfully speaking, I'm actually more in favor of the the Superman design. I think, based on a comparing of the of the figures, um, I do like what they went with on Batman. It's not my preferred look, obviously, but I do like what they went where they went with this figure, or based really on the design standpoint of it. It's a it's a fairly faithful reproduction of what Batman would look like if you produced him here in plastic treatment. Now, unfortunately, this figure is not 100% perfect in regards to how he was how he was made, as I seem to have some real glaring, noticeable paint removal off the top points of Superman's cowl. I don't suspect this is just uh, you know this runs the gambit on all Batman figures. I want, I'm sure I've picked up one that just happens to have the defect to the top. It's certainly not something that a little bit of paint or just a little bit of a marker can't touch up. So it's not, it doesn't look like it's broken, but it certainly is very noticeable that paint has come off the tips of this, uh, of the cowl. The face is good if you are a fan of Lee Bermeo's work. A more gritty, grimacing looking Batman here. The design is, again, very unique. Very, very unique, right down to the fact that the the bat emblem is actually part of the cape rather than part of his uniform, uh, the torso uniform area here. Uh, I think the coloring also on his face is done well. A mixture of flesh tones with some pinks. 
some darker areas just to bring out, especially the areas of the recessed uh, sections of the eyes. Very, very nice. The rest of the uh, the cape as well as the rest of the cowl is just is just solely black. There's not really a lot of care or a lot, in this case, a lot of additional color that's been added to it. Although the cape does look like where the seam lines come down, a lighter bit of coloring was added to it, or especially around here, it looks like a lighter bit of coloring. And I can't imagine that that solely is just due to quality issues. It looks like it was intentional, which I actually do like, as opposed to this being just completely one color. The cape, as you would imagine, much like Superman's cape, is bizet. There's a lot of additional wrinkles and creases to it. It does look like Batman washed his cape and then didn't iron it, just literally threw it on him. Something, again, that could alienate a collector from wanting to pick up this figure, but on the other end, the flip end of it, anyone that's a fan of Leaper Mayo would instantly see this and say, oh, okay, that's, that's a very accurate read to how it looks like in the comic itself. The figure, as you can imagine, also by gauging visually just looking at it is is a very stocky blocky looking uh, Batman very thick thighs very broad square almost box like torso it's it's again a very unique looking design I can't say I 100% hate it I do like elements to it that I always do like different takes on a superhero even though my go-to may not necessarily be this design I do really like when they go off the beaten path and a new artist comes in or a new designer and, and drastically changes up. Even if it's for a short run, drastically changes a look to a character. Some of the other elements to this figure that help break up just the overall gray and black tone that we see is this very bright, not so much bright, but bright certainly by contrast to the grays and the blacks, the utility belt, which is colored in almost a lighter I want to say what, like a lighter orangey brown. Uh, there is the back of the figure as well, the back of the utility belt. I would love to see uh, how they would approach a Lee Bermeo Joker. I think that would be kind of cool as well. Joker's very, very zany uh, in his design, at least in the Bermeo run. Uh, when it comes to his posability, Batman's head is a little, a little restricted, is an understatement. You can rotate it, but the whole time it's creaking, it's squeaking, it's it's really giving you a lot of resistance. And I've had this figure out for a while now. Head also moves up and down, but very, very stiff on the neck portion. The arms hinge out, but as you can probably guess it, the cape basically just consumes so much of the motion in the arms. You can move the arms forward, that's no, not so much the issue. But moving the arms out can be a little bit more difficult unless you kind of bring the cape out. But still, you've got the shoulders really keeping a lot of that at bay. Uh, he does have a bend at the elbow. It also looks like a singular bend. I thought it might have been a double hinged elbow, but it's only a singular uh, hinge. A rotation in the hand. And also a hinge back and forth. Uh, when it comes to his torso, he doesn't have any sort of waist swivel, which I guess can make some sense because the way the utility belt has been sculpted, yeah, it doesn't look like it would really clear that. They've just sculpted it right into the torso. Legs move forward, legs move back, legs move out. A top swivel, three-quarter swivel cut on the thigh. He has a singular hinge on the knee, and not only does he have a substantial ankle pivot, but the feet also move back and forth as well. It's to note as well that this particular figure does not also have any peg holes, which is strange. Generally, even if they don't come with display stands where nine times out of ten they don't, uh, usually, if anything, they give him pegs on the undersides of his feet. In this case, with Batman, he comes with nothing. Surprise. Very, very surprised. All in all, not a bad-looking Batman. I think you can appreciate the fact that it takes such a departure from a conventional Batman that by in that logic, it's actually a pretty cool-looking figure, or a pretty cool figure based on a design that's already a really decent, uh, really interesting, I don't want to say decent, but a really interesting design. Lee Bermeo, I don't think I would put as my top, I would even say my top five uh, uh, cr uh, designers or, or artists over there. But I, I do respect the work that he does. He took something that was so tried and true as a, as a character like Batman, and much like the Superman, takes it and puts a very distinct spin on it. You have to credit artists such as that that think outside the box and get a chance to kind of have freedom to kind of do what they want to do with the character. It's not going to be his guaranteed look for, for the ages, but certainly a departure like this is, 
in some regards, a breath of fresh air. It's really different. And even if it's for a very short period of time, you can kind of see what a different artist would have done with a character that normally may look something completely different. So for that reason, I like the figure. It's not my preferred look for Batman, but it's somewhat unique. And I guess I should have really had that same mindset when I did the review of Superman. The figure was a little iffy, but truthfully speaking, the design itself was at least a departure, and I really should have given it, I think, a better, fair chance, I think. Uh, pick this guy up if you are a fan of Lee Bermeo, but really just pick him up if you are interested in something a little bit different when it comes to a Batman design. It's just a shame, though, that the paint has slightly been removed on the top of the ears, but nonetheless, a very interesting Batman, to say the least. Today's toy spot, we were having a look at the DC Collectibles. This was the DC Comics designer series, Lee Bermeo. This was the Cape Crusader Batman. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more videos heading your way as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.